there chums, it's I, Captain Stephen XO, and I'm up on my freighter, and I'm here with all of my ships, and I'm looking at my ships, and I'm thinking to myself, well, all of my ships feel fairly similar. Now that they've all got the same sort of level of storage and, and technology slots, they're all sort of fairly balanced out. The only places that they may vary slightly is the Explorer, for example. The hyperdrive range is freaking phenomenal, whereas my fighter, the damage potential is phenomenal. You know, so yeah, I'm thinking maybe if they introduced new ship missions and new ship perks. So let's move on to perks on the Explorer first of all. So imagine if you installed this and this, but inside the actual starship. So I'll put them here, for example, or something like that. Maybe that could trigger a new perk that when I'm flying this ship, if I press like uh, two buttons simultaneously, square and triangle or, or whatever, it brings up some sort of number pad and I can just dial into that number pad which galaxy I wish to jump to. So if I was in Hilbert I could just type in 01 and jump back to Euclid. So that would be a nice little ship perk wouldn't it? To be able to jump to whichever universe um, is possible. Uh, it, you wouldn't necessarily have to have even been there. I mean, if you've completed the game once, you can get both of those items that I mentioned, and I feel that that would be perfectly fine. It'd be a good way of getting back to Euclid from whichever dimension you're in, or going to visit friends. So a lot of people that like multiplayer might pick up an Explorer just for that ability. But I also think that they should be ship-related missions. So this being an Explorer, it'd be nice if there was a special sort of a scanner that you could install, that you get from the missions agent, that then lets you scan a planet from space, and it picks up whatever is um, the most highest in, in value on that planet. So it might pick up all the waypoints, or it might pick up all the creatures, or it might pick up all the flora. So when you go to see good old Helios, you're going to get a shed load of nanites, and you don't have to actually land on the planet to explore. The explorer ship does the exploring for you, to a certain degree. It does one at random from that sort of pool, and scans and gives you all the results from that. And scanning the planet again wouldn't do anything either, so scanning another planet might though. So yeah, you can use this to just, you know, stay in space the whole time if you wish, if you don't wish to land on planets anymore. Lovely little, lovely little idea I think for that one. So essentially, making the Explorer an awesome ship to do in exploring and scanning missions from any mission agent. I mean, there could be another uh, a mission that's granted to the Explorer ship's class. It could be that maybe they mount a camera to the outside of the ship and take in photos from space could be a thing. So then you could take pictures of actual planets from space in an Explorer and you get uh, missions for doing said thing as well from mission agents. Maybe take a photo of um, you know, a barren world and things like that. I think we've already got missions that do that already. But yeah, for explorers and uh, the missions agent, maybe a few more of those for the explorer okay, class. Okay, as well. Next up is the uh, living ships. Now, the living ships are pretty darn awesome to look at, but that's probably about it right now because you can't expand the storage on these guys. I mean, look, if I go and jump into the ship, make it my primary, jump out of said ship, and let's bring up the old menu on the ship. I mean, yeah, it's not all that great, but look at the hyperdrive range. It's comparable with the Explorer and the maneuverability is freaking sweet. The damage potential is okay as well. I mean, the stats on this almost make up for the fact that I've got hardly any storage left in the actual ship. And yet, yeah, there's so much more room for technology spaces and things like that. But at the moment, there is no real bonuses to flying around in a living ship other than they look freaking fantastic. So I'm thinking perhaps if there is a ways and means to get into the void, Perhaps the only way to do so would be by using a living ship in a certain way, shape or form. Perhaps it gets some sort of cross-dimensional drive or a shift drive that will mirror you into another universe, into the void. So I'm thinking this ship is the only ship that can get you in, in and out of the void unscathed. But also, I think if you go for a black hole, I think you should be unscathed as well. Nothing breaks. I mean, it's organic. So, yeah, I would, and getting repair kits, I don't think it works on these things. I haven't actually tried that, chums. I haven't actually tried a repair ship, re repair kit on a living ship. But, yeah, I think going through black holes would be a nice little perk for this. As for missions, well, I don't think a mission agent would give you an additional mission for a living ship because they're not of this verse. I, I think the only place you should be able to pick up missions for living ships is inside the void itself and what those missions could be I'd leave up to you guys or even hello games to come up with if it ever becomes a thing 
Heck yes. But, you know, it could be all sorts of stuff. It could be that, you know, using a living ship, finding abandoned or derelict freighters could just be a button press or something. You know, that, that could work, couldn't it? I reckon that could work a damn treat. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, abandoned freighters are a bit freaking weird. It's like they just pop out of the void. So, yeah, perhaps there is some sort of scanner we can install to find, um, you know, abandoned freighters nice and easy with our living ships. Heck yes. Right, well, next up is everyone's favourite type of ship, a shuttle. Yeah, so, you know, everybody's flying around in these things. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't see many people rocking a shuttle, but I really like this one. It kind of almost looks like a Sentinel fighter. But yeah, shuttles aren't everyone's favourite type of ship. But maybe they could be if they got some decent perks and things like that. So I think before I move on to perks, maybe move on to the missions. So mission-wise, for the actual shuttles... I feel if you could um, pick up taxi-like missions, so inside of a station or even a trading post, anywhere where there's NPCs really, they could ask to be flown from A to B, so they might want to go from the station to a planet, or they might want to go from one system to another system, and you can actually take them there, and they give you some awesome, awesome drops, or lots of nanites or units for doing so, or perhaps even a small amount of quicksilver. Because then I think people would start picking these up. Because that's going to be a relatively easy mission to do. It could be quite good fun if there's dialogue as well in between you and that NPC on the journey. Um, and then, uh, yeah, at the end of it, you get given something freaking awesome. In fact, maybe you could have a choice of things to actually say, well, yeah, I'll take you there for some Quicksilver or I'll take you there for a rare item. Or, yeah, and then it's, it's random in what they give you, or nanites or units. Whatever you need, you can choose. So it gives you a bit of choice in reward for doing a very simple mission. I think people then would become taxi drivers for the verse, heck yes, in these nice little shuttles. As for a perk, at the moment I've got all six ships. So I can't scrap ships without getting rid of one of my ships inside of my repertoire. So I'm thinking inside of a shuttle, you install a piece of tech and it lets you have a mobile scrapping unit inside of your ship. So when you actually go over to a ship that's crashed or whatever, you can actually just select the option to scrap said ship. Yeah, it should only really work on crashed ships. <laughs> you know, you can't just go to a trading post and start scrapping NPC NPC ships. Heck no, that just wouldn't work. Every time you find a crashed ship, you get the option to scrap it if you've got a shuttle with the scrapper tech installed. I think that could work freaking nicely. So yeah, there we are. I think a lot more people would start using shuttles as scavengers and taxi services. I think that could work quite nice as a ship class. Heck yes. Rightio, so next up is the hauler class of ship. So the haulers, they're freaking gigantic, they're freaking awesome. They look they look the part, but their manoeuvrability is terrible. I mean, they, they hardly turn at the moment. So, um, yeah, let's uh, just swap to this ship for a second. I'll show you what I mean. So if I jump into here, if I look at manoeuvrability, even though I've upgraded the pulse engines as high as I can, it's only just about to hit, like, the 570. I say as high as I can. I've upgraded it a lot. I mean, I've got a few S-classes in there. Did I put some in technology? Yes, I did. So that's probably as close to max as I can get it without really fishing around for better ones. So the manoeuvrability is terrible. Now, I feel that on a, on a hauler, as an extra perk, you should get an extra tab. And this one should be something like um, Smuggler's Bay or something similar, you know, contraband or something, something like that or stealth compartment. So you put whatever items you don't want the pirates to scan in that area. Now, it could have something like 12 slots or something like that. So it gives it extra storage space. I mean, it's a bigger freaking ship. So why the heck not? So an extra 12 slots for somebody could be quite good. But, you know, when pirates do actually scan you, I think what would be nice is if it actually, you know, you know, they say, oh, we've found these these goods like stasis devices that are worth a freaking packet. It'd be nice if you had the option to give them what they had actually found in the scan. You know, oh, we want your star silk. Well, there you go. Have my star silk. And then it makes that extra tab make a little bit more sense. So you can either pay them with a ransom 
or you can pay them with the item that they've actually scanned and said that they want. So if they said, I want your 15 salvage data, I'm going to be like, no, I've been digging that stuff up for three hours. No, I'm going to zap you. You know, if they wanted the Walker Brain, you can make the decision. Yeah, go on and take the freaking Walker Brain. But if you've got everything that you really want to keep inside your smuggler's bay, you've never got to worry about the pirates trying to take some of that elusive stuff that you want to keep that's going to be worth freaking shed loads. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think an extra slot for these guys would be freaking awesome with an extra 12 slots in there and make them a high capacity as well. A similar sort of capacity as that of your freighter. That would be awesome. I think base builders would start using these a little bit more just to fly down from their freighter with all their base, base building parts in because they've got that extra storage. I think that could work a freaking treat. And also, that extra storage space in survival and perma also is high capacity making these almost like movable vaults that'll be freaking ace um, for base builders and other players I mean I, yeah I'd find the use for it I'm sure I think after you've actually got a smuggler's bay as a tab with this sort of class of ship maybe the missions that it could open up are smugglers missions so take a shed load of contraband they could fill up some of your maximum capacity storage slots maybe two on a mission or something with some hyper rare stuff and then lots of it and then you have to fly it to a different um, area of space and drop it off for loads of units in return. Don't give you a choice for anything other than the units. However, you could choose to just nick the stuff and sell it at a GT terminal. And uh, yeah, and get maybe half the units instead of the mission. But it lowers your reputation if you keep doing that. You know, so that could be quite a fun sort of thing to do. And if you are doing it, you know, you get scanned by pirates. They, and because that you're flying a hauler, maybe scanning of pirates becomes a little bit more frequent if you're in a hauler. Uh, yeah, so I think that could be a nice idea. I think that could work quite swimmingly. Heck yes. Important announcement time. Yes, so I'm thinking instead of upgrading your class at the scrapping terminals on stations perhaps running the ship missions upgrade your class over time of doing the missions much like the frigate missions that we do from our freighters yeah that would make a, a nicer sort of mechanic <laughs> important announcement over experience points for ships Well, next up is the exotics. Now, the exotics are freaking awesome. I love my little exotic ship. If I go into my exotic ship here, you can see the hyperdrive range is just as good as my little explorer. Um, the maneuverability is awesome. Damage potential is okay. Shield strength is, isn't all that good. It's, bit, it's not really made for fighting, this ship. This ship is almost like, you know, a slightly more galvanized explorer. So the Explorer ship to me is a bit redundant at the moment because I've got this little ship that seems to be able to jump just as far and do the job just as well. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little ship. But again, it's got exactly the same amount of technology slots and normal general storage as my hauler. It, it almost makes this the all-round perfect ship for doing everything as it stands. Now because it is one of these all-rounder type ships, perhaps it could be a little bit RNG. I, normally I don't like you know, randomness and given to something, but maybe these ships can do pretty much anything that any of the other ships can do, but it's randomly assigned to the ship. So you might get one where you can actually install the actual tech that I mentioned for the Explorer. So you might be able to inst install these two items into your, your exotic and get the ability to jump systems. Or it might have the ability to actually weather black holes. It may even be able to get you in and out of the void. Or it might have the extra slot for the actual cargo for the smugglers area. You know, so it's, it can pick up any of the random abilities or ship missions from any of the other ships. But they're assigned to the ship in complete randomness. So, yeah, you might have to shop around for an explorer for a heck of a long time to get the sort of perks and classes that you want on it. So it gives a little bit of end game stuff to do on it. Other than that, if it wasn't going to be RNG, other ideas for the ex the ex So, if not RNG and they didn't have stuff assigned randomly, perhaps something fixed for these could be if you go inside of the actual tech maybe it will allow you to move this onto there and it would give you the actual option so let's see if I when I move it onto there 
it could say do you wish to stack this module and you hit yes and it melds them together and then you can move it on you can move that one that's a times two onto a times three so it will free up a load of extra storage inside of your ship so you can merge the tech together it still gives exactly the same perk but it would give you extra free storage inside of your ship making it pretty damn freaking sweet as a ship to just use every single day as your go-between sort of um, ship because you've got all that additional storage it just lets you stack the modules I think that could be an awesome additional perk for an, for an exotic ship as for mission wise it could just be that it boosts the amount of units or nan nanites that you get from the normal missions by said by say like I don't know a 1.5 so you're going to get a lot more for running missions inside of an exotic ship when it comes to nanites or units and perhaps as an additional sort of mission it could be that um, you're asked to gather stuff like activated idium, activated cadmium, activated emerald for merchants and things and take them from say if you've got the idium maybe you've got to take it to a cadmium system and if you've got cadmium maybe you've got to take it to the emerald system that sort of thing because you know they're, they're rare in between each of the different realms and you can take them to different trading posts and uh, yeah you get quite a lot of units or nanites for doing so because you know you've already got that 1.5 perk but yeah you're going to have to land on planets and mine the stuff out the ground or maybe there could be an additional mining type laser that you get from um, uh, for the exotic ships that lets you mine clusters from your actual ship and a scanner that maybe even helps you locate the activated sources of minerals on planets uh, but yeah there we go that's um the exotic covered and yeah I, th I think that could be a little bit op though <laughs> yeah what do you guys think yeah feel free to add to the comments if you've got other ideas or perks or whatever or missions that could be run in sort of these ships for classes or perks please put them in the video comment section because i'm hoping to send this over to the zendesk as an idea and so hopefully they can read your comments and your ideas if mine aren't all that great and some of yours are maybe they might pill for some of your ideas so there we go Please contribute if you've got a good idea, stick it in the comments. In fact, no idea is a stupid idea, you know what I mean? So there we go. Well, hello there, chums. Have I left the best till last? Yep, the fighter class of ship. It's, it's one of my favourites, chums. I mean, let's face it, let's just take a quick look at this freaking thing. I mean, look at that. It looks freaking awesome. And all fighters look freaking awesome, to be fair, don't they? I mean, yes. And I really like the fighters. And ever since they've let you upgrade the... Um, the storage and everything else they're pretty damn awesome you can see here I went mental on the hyperdrive and it, it's still not as good as uh, my exotic or my explorer but you know it's end game I don't really need to jump that far anymore I've got no needs to push towards the center so I fly around in this as my everyday ship because it's got just as much storage space the te and technology space as any other ship at the moment you know so I'm thinking for fighters Perhaps what they could add is some extra tech. At the moment we've got rocket launchers which is great but why not add like heat seeking missiles and also for maybe just the fighters alone um, some other sort of modules to boost the actual rockets ability so to fire two missiles at once and to have them lock on as sidewinders or heat seekers or whatever I think that could work quite nicely. You might not be able to call them heat seekers you might have to call them sort of like um, tritium seekers or something and it, it follows the ship trails of other ships and blasts them out of the sky i think that'd be quite nice but also i think they should make a bigger impact on freighters and some of the missions i feel should be to team up with other fighters form a squadron and take out freighters and yeah if you've all got those missile launchers and you could lock on to maybe the turrets on a freighter or you can lock on to the storage containers on a freighter fire the missiles and they sidewind in and you're all doing that at once it could look freaking awesome to have a volley or a hailstone full of rockets flying everywhere but at the same time I kind of feel that the freighters in game should be upscaled somewhat so when you are attacking freighters there should be a lot more fighters that come out there should be a lot more cannons on the freighters I think attacking freighters should be something that you only really want to do in a fully tooled up fighter doing it in a hauler or any other craft would see you get your ass handed to you on a plate I think I honestly do think they need to up the difficulty level in taking out a freaking freighter and a frigate sort of fleet 
So if I go and attack freighters right now, I'm only going to really want to do it inside of a fighter. You know, that, that will make it a heck of a lot more fun. And if you pick up a mission where you have to sort of posse up with people and have three other people and fly out as a squadron against said freighters, that would be awesome fun. So yeah, I think that would be great as um, a perk, additional weaponry, it doesn't have to be rockets, there could be all sorts of other sorts of weapons that you can get, but I think rockets works well with the fact that you can lock onto different targets by using your d-pad left and right to either select turrets, storage containers, other fighters, interceptors, whatever, and then you take them out that way. I think that could be awesome fun, because then you could say to your squadron mates, you focus on the turrets, I focus on grabbing all the storage stuff because I've got loads of free slots, and you take out all the fighters, so you can assign sort of roles to your squadron and work as a team to take out the freighter and I think when you actually board freighters um, after you've actually completely annihilated them you know perhaps then you, there could be some sort of loot system or loot run with actual NPCs that you can battle inside the freighters as part of the mission that would be pretty awesome and if you do manage to siege and overtake a freighter perhaps you could actually leave it to one of your squadron mates to say well there you go you've just got yourself a freighter maybe up the chance of it, chances of it of being an A class and an S class somewhat by maybe a, a decent chunk by say I don't know 25% higher stakes of getting an A or an S but there we go um, that's that's all my ideas I've run out of ship classes and types now chums so yeah thank you guys for watching and I'm hoping you like these ideas, and if you've got other ideas, please leave them in the comments, like I was saying earlier. It'd be awesome to read, plus I'm going to send this over to, to the Zen desk, as I said as well. Anyway, you guys have been freaking awesome, and yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And I want to say a massive great big thank you for watching my video, and also another thank you to all of my Patreon backers. And yes, if you want to back me over on Patreon, see the video description for links on how to do so. Check out all the tiers, there's something there for pretty much everyone. I also have YouTube membership. Thank you to all my YouTube members, thanking you very much indeedy duty. heck yes. There's all different tiers over on the YouTube membership as well, so if you're thinking of supporting me, please check out both before making the decision. And I also have merch. Nice and fine and dandy merch, including socks and a t-shirt or a vest or a mug, heck yes. And I also have 3D printed Atlas passes. Again, see the video description and my own website. Yeah, another way to support my channel is just don't skip my adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue or just hit one of these buttons on this screen, heck yes.